In this video, we are going to discuss the chain rule. Uh, in terms of fair warning, we'd like you to know this is one topic that confuses the living daylights out of a lot of students. Uh, in terms of its applicability, it is absolutely crucial that you learn it, though, because we've seen, well, we had shortcuts for finding the derivative of a constant for a constant multiple, for adding, subtracting, multiplying for the product rule, Dividing has the quotient rule. We were looking at shortcuts to do trigonometry, trigonometric functions, derivatives. But in all of those things, we never did function composition. The chain rule is what will allow you to do function composition. How do you take the derivative of a function that's inside another function? Our learning objectives are fairly straightforward. Know what the chain rule is and be able to use it. Take a moment, copy down the definition for the chain rule. Well, it's not a definition, it's a theorem, but copy it down. Uh, we have it in both standard notation and Leibniz notation. After your, when we are working on the uh, problems, though, with the examples, we won't actually go through and reference the theorem specifically. What instead we're going to do is look at a way that you could potentially remember it and hopefully work with it more efficiently. Find f prime of x if f of x is equal to the square root of x cubed minus x. The main thing that the chain rule is used for is you notice on the inside we have a function. And that function is inside another function. This is what the chain rule is used for. Functions inside of functions. That's a composition. The rule is fairly straightforward. You see all this stuff on the inside? We're just going to temporarily call this stuff blob. We've got blob to the one half power. Take the derivative of that. How do you take the derivative of something to the one half? One half, blob, and then we have to subtract one from the exponent, so half minus one is negative one-half. We are still not done. The chain rule tells us that we can do this part perfectly fine, but afterward we have to also add the derivative of the blob. So what we've got then is one-half. The blob does not change here. But then we've got to take the derivative of blob. So what's that derivative? 3x squared minus 1. That's our derivative. This is f prime of x. And we're done. Now, conceivably, there could be some simplification. We could do some algebra to rewrite it and make it look prettier, make it look simpler. But this is correct. That's the chain rule. Well, to rewrite this, one half and with a negative exponent, that would be two times the square root x cubed minus x. Just taking the one half down to the denominator, and the negative exponent, of course, goes to the denominator as well. But then we'd have three x squared minus one, and that's a little bit simpler a little bit perhaps easier to understand version, but we're done. Our second problem, find y prime. Of course, y prime is the derivative. If y is equal to, well, actually it's going to be two separate problems so that we can see the structure behind this. Where do you see an inside function? Where do you see an outside function? So we're looking at cosine of some blob. Our blob is x squared. Well, if we want to take the derivative of this, the chain rule tells us take the derivative of cosine. What is that? Negative sine, and the blob is going to stay inside. But then we have to multiply by the derivative a blob. The 
inner function is our blob. Okay, so that tells us we have negative sine of x squared times 2x, which tells us y prime is negative 2x sine of x squared. That answer is done. Of course, over on the right-hand side, this one is cosine of x quantity squared. You can see how it changes the inner function. This is asking us to take the derivative of blob squared. So when we take that derivative, we'd get 2 times the blob. 2 minus 1 is just 1 for the exponent, times the derivative of blob. So what do we wind up with? 2 times cosine squared x times the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Well, that tells us we have negative 2 sine x cosine squared x. And noting that, we get a very different answer. Paying attention to the inner function and the outer function as a part of the chain rule is absolutely critical. First two examples were good. Okay, so differentiate. What do we have? Okay. I don't want to keep writing blob over and over and over and over. That's kind of silly. It's kind of juvenile. It's a great way to remember it. But what we're noting is, here's our stuff on the inside. When we differentiate it, what do we need to do? Okay. This is like saying we're taking the derivative of something to the fourth power. And I'm just changing it to the letter u simply because it's just a substitution to change the variable. I'm using the letter u instead of writing the word blob. But it's the same idea. Something to the fourth power tells me 4 times u cubed multiplied by the derivative of u. It just so happens that this u, though, is the whole function x squared plus 2x minus 1. And so what is the derivative of x squared plus 2x minus 1? 2x plus 2. And so here is our answer. We could simplify it by noting we could factor out the 2 from there. And so then we'd have 4 times x And I'm doing that just so that we could note 4 times 2 gives us 8, x plus 1. And then x squared plus 2x minus 1, which actually does not factor. So here we go. We're done. All things considered, making sense so far? That's just the main thing that you've always got to be paying attention for. Look for an inside function, look for an outside function. Now, please note, this is a function that we could use, like f of x or g of x over h of x. We could use this as a constant function 1. And another function like this, and have to do quotient rule, because we do have a quotient. But within the quotient rule, we would have to do chain rule. That is a valid strategy. It is a bad strategy. It's a bad strategy because the amount of work required is a lot more than just being able to rewrite the function into an easier format. How could we rewrite this function so that it's simpler? You notice that we have a third root? Well, that's one-third. But because it's one over a cubed root, it's a negative third. 
we can just use our previous definitions of exponents, our previous theorems for exponents, to rewrite this, which makes it significantly easier to calculate the derivative now. Tell me what we would need to do. Okay, we're noting this as like a u to the negative one-third. Negative one-third. And u happens to be the x squared minus one. But we also need to subtract one from the exponent. So negative one-third subtract one. That's negative four-thirds, or negative one and one-third. Are we done? Nope. We still have to take the derivative of the u. Yeah, which is just 2x. And so we could rewrite that. It would just be 2x, then, instead of the 1. x squared minus 1 to the negative four-thirds. I still don't really like the way that looks. Just as a matter of preference. I mean, it's correct, but just as a matter of preference, I prefer to write them instead of having the negative exponent. With the four-thirds. To me, that looks better. It looks simpler. It just looks prettier. But both are correct. Okay, so note this one. This is an instance where we can clearly see we don't just have two functions. We have like a u of v to the fifth power. So we have a blob over a blob. That does not change the way that the chain rule works. The derivative is still going to be and let me just write this as one big blob, blob to the fifth, okay? So we wind up with five times blob to the fourth multiplied by the derivative of blob. But of course, blob itself, pointing to it in the red, is a quotient of functions. 3t minus 1 for the numerator function, t minus 4 for the denominator function. So when we're taking this derivative, because it is still two more functions, this is one that's going to require we use the quotient rule. It's still a part of the chain rule. This first line that I wrote, 5 blob to the fourth times derivative of blob, this part is the chain rule. It's just when we continue, we will need to use the quotient rule on top of it. So we would have 5 times blob to the fourth power multiplied by its derivative. And I'm going to switch this one to red so that we can see where the chain rule is coming. Not the chain rule. Uh, I'll switch this to yellow so that we can have the quotient rule. Okay, the quotient rule tells us that we would have, we have the second times the derivative of the first minus the first times the derivative of the second all over the second squared. That's our quotient rule that we need to now employ. So we have five 3t minus 1 over t minus 4, 4. And we're going to start running through this particular part now. Second, our v was t minus 4. The derivative of the numerator, 3t minus 1, is just 3t. Then we will subtract the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is just a 1, all over the bottom squared. 
this piece in the yellow is the chain is the quotient rule it's being used as a part of the chain rule overall now we still have this part right here this bottom line is correct it's not simplified but it's correct so we would have to start simplifying it to finish the problem okay that would tell us times okay distributing we'd have 3t squared minus 12t minus 3t plus 1 all over t minus 4 quantity squared and when we simplify that okay still writing down our stuff that we had on the left that would tell us 3t squared minus 15t plus 1 over t minus 4 quantity squared and there we go we have our answer it's big it's complex but that's just the way these problems are going to wind up going if you're taking three functions with a composition in order to do this whole piece it takes a lot of work so here's our end result g prime of t equals this part where we had to combine the chain rule and the quotient rule together all right this one's going to get a bit messy please note right away that this is telling us we have a function multiplied by a function u cubed times v to the fifth or to use the notation that our authors prefer to use we have f cubed times g to the fifth since this is a product of two functions f of cubed times the fifth we know that to take the derivative we will have to use the product rule first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first that's using the product rule within each one of these we can see though that taking the derivative here the derivative of g to the fifth is going to require that we use the chain rule same piece here the derivative of f cubed since f is another function it's our blob inside a function that's going to also require the chain rule at each of those stages in the red okay so let's start writing this piece stuff out y prime is f cubed that's x squared plus 2x cubed multiplied by the derivative of g to the fifth well that derivative is going to be 5 times g to the fourth multiplied by the derivative of g this piece again this is our chain rule continuing the problem we would have g to the fifth which is x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 6x minus 4 to the fifth power multiplied by the derivative and it's the derivative of f cubed and let me back that part up the derivative of f cubed is 3 times f squared times the derivative of f once again this piece that's where the chain rule is being used we'll start putting all of these pieces together we can then say y prime is equal to and I'm trying to write this smaller just so it all fits obviously you can see how big it gets x squared plus 2x cubed times 5 then g is x to the fourth 
minus 2x cubed plus 6x minus 4. And that has got to be to the fourth power. And now we're multiplying by the derivative of g. So that's the derivative of this part. And that would be 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6. And we have our answer there. Continuing onward to the right-hand side. Uh, copying down, we had x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 6x minus 4 to the fifth power times 3. And then we have f squared, which is x squared plus 2x quantity squared. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of f, which is this part here. Well, that one just happens to be 2x plus 1. And there we go. This whole long thing in black winds up being our answer. And admittedly, it will be absolutely brutal to simplify this piece. It would be absolutely incredibly wicked to expand all of those. But this is the answer that we wind, wind up getting. It's a lot. Understandably, it's a ton of work. But we could start factoring out some pieces to try to simplify it a little bit. In particular, note that we have x squared plus 2x squared. Well, right here, we have x squared plus 2x cubed. Well, that's just 2 plus 1. Noting that we could take out this common factor, x squared plus 2x squared, from the our work. Likewise, you notice how we have x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 6x minus 4 in more than one spot. Well, we have a power of 4. Power of 5 is 4 plus 1. We could take out 4 of them. Which is going to wind up leaving 1 over on the right-hand side. We'd also like to note with 4, 6, and 6, we could factor out a 2 from those which would change this to a 10, 5 times 2, leaving behind 2, 3, and 3. But when we put all this together, what was left behind? Well, we left behind 10, x squared plus 2x. And we left behind a 2x cubed. And, yeah x cubed, I wrote plus 3, that was supposed to be a minus 3, minus 3x three plus 3, and then we could say that left behind a single factor of x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 6x minus 4 and 2x plus 1, which is a more simplified version. So yes, it's a lot of work. And even expanding that part would still create more issues. But that's just the algebra component. The chain rule, the actual calculus form, was right at this stage. This part in the red box is the calculus. It's setting up and recognizing that here is the product rule. And as a part of the product rule, we twice needed to use the chain rule. Example 7. You'll notice this time we have three functions. We have f 
of g of h. Well, this is an instance where we could recognize this or write this as cosine of blob. Okay, so when we take the derivative, the chain rule tells us take the derivative of cosine. That is negative sine of blob multiplied by the derivative of blob. Well, our blob in this case is underlined here in the red. Well, that tells us we have negative sine of sine of tangent x multiplied by the derivative of our blob, which was sine of tangent of x. Well, this stuff over on the left, we're just going to need to leave it. Negative sine of sine of tangent. But then we've got this part where we're taking the derivative of sine of tangent. Well, once again, we're taking a derivative. So this is saying take the derivative of this part. We will once again need to use the chain rule. Using the chain rule again tells us take the derivative of the outer part. Derivative of sine is negative cosine of blob multiplied by the derivative of blob. It just so happens that we have a new blob. Okay, so continuing this problem, I'm just copying down the stuff on the left because nothing has changed that. times negative cosine, and the blob on this one was just tangent of x, multiplied by the derivative of tangent, which would then let us say, coming back, negative sine, sine of tangent x times negative cosine tangent x multiplied by the derivative of tangent, which you should remember is secant squared of x. Now, rather than writing off a whole new line, I would just like to note, if you notice how this is a negative times a negative, a negative times a negative is a positive, so I'm just going to get rid of the two negative signs, and here we go. We have our answer. Yep, it's a lot of work to be sure, but that's what the problem entails. And our last problem that we have. We have to note that this would be cosecant of x to the one-third. So to take the derivative, the chain rule tells us, since this is our u, we would have one-third u to the negative one-third. Sorry, one-third minus one is negative two-thirds. Then multiply by the derivative of our inner function, our u. Okay, well, that's one-third cosecant x to the negative two-thirds. And then we just have to take the derivative of cosecant. Well, what's the derivative of cosecant? That one is negative cosecant x times cotangent x, which finishes off the chain rule. We actually are done. This is our correct answer y prime is this piece. I would still like to simplify it so that it looks a little bit nicer. Well, I'm going to take down the one-third and the negative exponent and simply put those in the denominator. 
And then for our numerator, we have negative cosecant x times cotangent x. And we're finished. That's fully simplified. I'd like to note, this was all about the chain rule. You should know what the chain rule is. In its most simple form, it says if you want to take the derivative of a function, you can split it up as the derivative of the inner, the derivative of blob, then you multiply by the derivative of blob. This is Leibniz notation. So it's saying, just a quick reminder, blob squared, the derivative of it is going to be 2 times blob. Then you multiply by the derivative of blob. That's, in its essence, what the chain rule says. You should know what it is and be able to use the chain rule to find the derivative of compositions. Granted, sometimes that's more simple or easier, like we had with example number two. Sometimes it gets very complex, where you need to use a quotient rule, like example five, or with a product rule, you have to look at the example, or you have to look at the function, figure out the structure, and be able to take the derivative. Sometimes easy, sometimes tough, but those are the learning objectives we have.